Hello everyone and welcome to this video. Today we're going to continue on the topic of power apps and responsive designs. So, uh, but unfortunately today we're going to have to eat the broccoli. So this is going to be about the X and Y coordinates. So it's a little bit boring, but it is important because we'll definitely be needing it later. So thank you for watching and if you haven't subscribed yet, please do. It'll help me uh, convince the guys upstairs that I can do more of these videos more frequently. So please go ahead and click on the subscribe button here or there, wherever it is. Thank you very much, guys. Thanks for watching. Let's jump into it. All right, so this is the app that we started with last time. And uh, what we're gonna be doing is, let's first delete that. We, we simply don't need that anymore. So first of all, let's discuss X and Ys. And um, so X and Y coordinates are a way for the app and the controls on the app to understand the position on the screen. And um, I know that a lot of guys in the past haven't really used X and Y coordinates in Power Apps because it was just so easy to drag and drop. Where now with responsive designs, you actually have to start using it. So to describe it, I'm gonna create a label and put it in the corner. Yes, I know I dragged and drop, but that's fine for now. And we call that zero. All right, so that spot, that spot over there in the corner is zero for X and Y. So this is the originating point for everything on the screen. So this is probably the only constant. Then from here, if you move to the right on this axis, this is called the X axis. And the greater the X coordinate becomes, the further right this dot will go. Same for the left, if you go down um, vertically, it, if you increase your Y coordinate, you will extend your height of the app and the dot will move down. So to demonstrate this, let's go and create two icons. And first let's use one that says arrow down and let's just put it there. And let's use another one. arrow right and let's put it there and let's go and copy that label and say that this is going to be the Y coordinate and we're going to be using the parent dot height for to display that I just need a ampersand over there and that is parent dot height let's make it a little bit bigger and let's do a similar thing over there. And this is going to be the X. And that is the parent dot width. All right, so that's going to give us the total measurements for the screen. Um, let's just go and make all of these things white. So it's just easier to see. Let's go and select the individual control types. So give us the color so there's white and it's going to select these and uh, no not full color as well might not like those color to white okay and then other oh, rectangle is also already white so that's fine Right, so if you sometimes get confused between the X and the Y and which goes where, um, I'll give, give you a quick tip that somebody gave me a long time ago when I still had hair. And um, basically the way I remember it is that the X has two legs, so it can easily stand on the horizontal axis, while the Y only has one leg, so it needs to lean against the vertical axis. So let's go and add some more controls to show you how the app responds and how these controls would uh, controls respond. Let's go and add an icon. Um, let's use an up arrow, and let's just start off and uh, make it white. Okay, and let's go and put it in the corner. Now for this corner, because it's going to be on the X axis that might adjust. We can't just drag and drop this. We need to go and tell it where to go. And because it's always going to be at the top, 
we're gonna say the y is zero and that's static it, it can't go anywhere else in that so that's perfect but the x might change depending on the width of the screen so what we're going to be doing is we're going to go and say go and get the parent dot width and the moment you type that in you'll see the control now responds accordingly but it's off the screen by its own width so what we want to do is go and say just take icon 3 dot width and subtract that from the parent dot width and that's going to be the x for that control right so that works well just rename this so let's just say um, right top top right is probably better top right there we go and uh, it's sitting in the corner let's make the icon also point into the corner and that's we can use the new icon functionality in power apps which is awesome so we can go and say have that point at 45 degrees so it hasn't taken the five so there we go it's pointing nice into nicely into the corner so let's go and take that same control and uh, make a copy of it paste it and now let's go and put it at the bottom right so just first of all rename this so it's going to be bottom right and the Y for this is now going to have to be dynamic so we're going to have to say go and have a look at the parent and the parent remember in hierarchy if you have a look at the tree view it'll show you that the screen is the parent of all of these controls so whenever you refer to as parent um, it'll go and look at the screen uh, property so we're going to have a look at the screen height and then again you'll see it's adjusting but it's now off the screen so we want to reduce the Y coordinate with the height of the control right so it's sitting in the corner it's pointing in the wrong direction but that's a different discussion let's go and fix that quickly so that's going to be a hundred and thirty five so there we go and that's pointing right into the corner so let's create another copy of this guy and it's actually putting it right on top of the other one now so you can't see it so let's go and tell it to move so the x coordinate for this is currently inheriting the formula and that's why it's sitting right on the right hand side so let's just turn that to zero and that's going to move it all the way left right and then we also want to change the coordinate i'm oh, sorry the rotation to oh, what's that two to five yep there we go and uh, let's also rename this to bottom left and look top right is going to be an issue because there's all of this stuff happening over here but top right is that zero over there so that's fine we don't need to create an icon for that or an arrow for that so next we're going to create two lines to just basically slice the screen and uh, just to show you how to center things and uh, so there isn't a line icon so we're going to have to use a flat rectangle let's do that first of all let's change the fill to white okay there you go and let's make the height of this guy five so it's very small now the width of this we're going to tell it to inherit the width of the screen so we're going to just say go and have a look at the parent dot width and then just use that value and you'll see that it's now not a line on the screen because the x coordinate is not correct so if we go and take make that zero you'll see that it now fits in nicely um, on the screen but it's not vertically aligned right so this is now very tempting to go and say you know well we want to align this and if you have a look at the home screen you'll see there are some align options and these sort of things and I'm sure in future these things will work better with responsive I'm sure that's on the, the Power Apps team's list to do's uh, but at the moment if I tell this thing to align in the middle 
it's going to line on this screen but the moment that it responds it's going to be stuck at that coordinate so you can't actually use this now I'm sure it's going to come but for right now you have to go and manually set this so to get this into the middle of the screen um, vertically we'll have to go and play around with the Y coordinate and what we'll do there is we'll go and say first of all um, go and have a look at the parent dot height okay and if the Y for this control is the parent dot height it's going to be right at the bottom so that's obviously what we don't want so you can go and say divide that by 2 and now the Y coordinate is halfway um, in the half of the, the parent height but the problem is this control is 5 pixels high at the moment so it's going to be off by 2.5 pixels so now you can either go and say less um, this control dot height divided by 2 um, you know which could create a bit of a nightmare from an order of operations or you can go and say I want to actually subtract so, so this works but another way to do this is actually go and say I want to divide that just put that in brackets so everybody can easily see what that's doing um, so we want to take the height of the parent and uh, less the height of this control and then divide the result by 2 and that's going to put it nicely in the center of the screen All right, so that works that works well let's just go and say um, this is an IC and that is vertical align alright so or vertical middle let's go and create a copy of that and uh, let's go and create one for horizontal middle as well and now we're just going to have to play around with, with a few of these properties so the width of this we're going to now make 5 so now it's going to be become a little dot in the corner there and the height of this we now want to say assume the height of the parent and then the x is currently 0 but we want to move that to the middle of the screen so again we're going to say like the parent dot width less the I see height dot width and then divide that by two and just put all of that in brackets so there we go there it is sitting right in the in the middle of the screen and before we go and preview this let's uh, quickly add two more labels I just want to quickly introduce you to two more properties oh actually it's not to create a new one just copy that and we're going to call this orientation and we're going to reference the screen orientation now for those of you guys who watched the previous video you might say but wait a minute why don't we just use that on the screen properties for width and height instead of manually checking whether the width and the height uh, or the width is greater than the height in order to determine whether it's horizontal or vertical um, and the, the answer for that is I agree with you it should we should be able to do that but at the moment it doesn't work and I suspect what's happening is the screen width calculates before this property does um, and then it, if you use it in this formula it doesn't work so that's why you have to do it like this for now maybe in future that will be an option but you can't actually use the screen orientation property in uh, properties that manipulate the screen. So this is for other controls that you can now use to determine whether you have a, a vertical or horizontal screen or a landscape and portrait. And then based on that you could then manipulate your, your controls. So that's the one uh, property. The other one is size and this is a an easy way to check what the size of the screen is uh, depending on certain breakpoints so at the moment it's one which means it's small and it's using if you go into the app property called size breakpoints you'll see these are currently 1200 so that's small 
1,800, that's medium, 2,400, that's large, and then you can also go and add additional ones if you wanted to. So in this array, I can go and say 2,800 for an example, and that'll be extra large or full. So if I use this, it'll return four if it exceeds that. All right, so we'll get into that in a little bit more detail. So you'll see that I just dragged this here, so that's gonna stay there. Uh, we, we actually want it to stay next to this line. So let's just go and say that um, we, that's for the orient let's do the orientation first. So we want to say the X of this, we would like to use the IC um, HM dot X and just move it like five away to give it a little bit of a border and we can just go and copy that and then the same for this. Sorry, not in the size but in the X property. Alright, so let's go and save and publish this and then uh, let's preview it. Remember that the responsive doesn't work in the studio so you actually have to save and publish it. Right, so now for the moment of truth, let's go and launch this in the runtime and let's wait for it to load. You'll see that it takes a second or two just to get, to get it, its ducks in a row and uh, you can see that all of the arrows are pointing nicely into the corner and these lines are straight through the middle so it's looking good. And as we go and resize this, you'll see that the arrows are coming with, that's good. Um, the orientation is now horizontal, or still horizontal, that's fine. The size is 4, the X coordinate you'll see is being reduced as I drag this. Now the size is 3, so it's now a large, and now it's 2, so it's medium, and you'll see all of these coordinates are just being adjusted as we go along. So it's working very well. Let's go and see what this looks like on a mobile device. So here we are on the phone and uh, let's go and see what this looks like. Immediately we can see that it's filling the screen quite nicely. Let's turn it horizontally. Everything is looking good. It's responding well. Very happy with how this works. It is also impossible to only do this once. You can go ahead and turn around and on its side as many times as you want and enjoy your handiwork. Thank you very much for watching and uh, hope to see you next time. Cheers everyone. Bye bye.